our ancestors did a long, long time ago. You're also in the section where someone or persons in your school gets to demonstrate their jumping and talent by beating the drum and shaking in some of our homemade cowbells with the kids did on their own. So we're gonna start, we're gonna start by calling to the number three. And as simple as counting in three, but counting with a rhythm. Watch my hand. The very first hit you're gonna hit here, what is called a bass, and everything else is going to be on the tenor part of the drum. So the first rhythm is to number three. One, two, three. is to go to the number six. So the other numbers are going to sound like this. Watch my hands also. One, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Ready? One, two, three, high. Hi, I'm Emily Sands, the music teacher at Topham Bay Primary. I was responsible for the music session of the Teach, um, Teach Me My Heritage presentation. My children had to learn about music, the history of music in the Bahamas. As a result, they were given a project to make a musical instrument the way their ancestors did, using whatever materials they could find. They were also given the task of creating artwork based on anything that they learned from the storytelling, the sacred, and the gombe part of the presentations. And on this wall here, we have the musicians, some of the musicians that we studied during the program, um, along with the, the instruments that they played and the songs that they would have recorded. So this is a comprehensive display of what we did during the, our place-based education section. A lot of these instruments were used during church services, um, during festivals, and whatever you could find, whatever you could put your hand on that made a sound, that is what you used. And as you can see, the junk and the music is playing in the background, and the instinct of any Bahamian, find something and go along with the rhythm. I'm the senior mistress at Top of Bay Primary School and the teacher of first grade. On the table, as you can see, we have some games from the past, also some that are used during the present. Grade one was responsible for indoor and outdoor games. On the table, you see some of the things that we use outdoors as well as some of the things that are used indoors. Here you have a top that is used with a rope. You put the bind the rope around the top, and once you get it reeled up, and you throw it down, and it begins to spin. Here we have Jackson Ball. Most children now are familiar with the Jackson Balls that they buy in the store. But in the past, when some students or children could not afford to buy the Jackson Ball, we just used the stones, or the cedar cones or anything we could find in the um, community and you just pick up a ball and then we use it to play jacks. Here we have what we call a sling that's made from the tube of a tire. You put a stone in it and it's called a sling, you just shoot. And this is also what we call a sling shock, basically the same as the sling. You just put a stone in it and you use it to shoot whatever. Here we have jump ropes. In the past, if you couldn't afford to buy a jump rope or skipping rope, you just use any piece of rope 
and you cut it to any length and you use it as a skipping rope. Here we have something that some children, well nowadays are not really familiar with this, but this was during my time and this was called what we call French skip. It's played with three, three students use this, or three children, and it's placed around the ankles of two of the children and the third one would stand in the middle and jump on and off the elastic. During the past when this was used, we didn't have the elastic that you buy in the store. We would use the stockings that the ladies wear to dress up with. We would use the stockings when they, once they are discarded and we would tie them together and we would make our French skip out of that. Also, we have marbles. And working with my students and some of the students around our school, the boys were, they were not even familiar with marbles. They didn't even know how to hold it in order to, to shoot it. So we went around to the different grades and we introduced the marbles. We showed them how to do marbles. We showed them how to do hopscotch, which is used. You have what we call, they used to get a piece of glass ball or something, put it on. And then you have squares that the children jump around to do pop stuff. And over here we have what is called a box card. Um, during my time growing up and, and days before that, the boys especially would make their box car and we would have what we call a box car race. You get in it and you can go on a hill, go down the hill, and then you have the rope in front and this was used to, to steer it, to turn left or right. That's what we call a Box car. Okay, okay, that's fine. Now take it back. Get up and carry it back where it was. Okay, thank you. You know, put it in Diane Carey here again with indoor-outdoor games. Over here we have grade K students learning how to do hot touch. And put in what we call we call a little icon on their hand. Over here, hula hoop going on. Have such going on over there and walking over a little further. Here we have students who are playing squares. We have four squares and they're hitting the, the ball and they must keep hitting the ball in each square without the ball going on the line or without the ball um, rolling. Over here we have jump rope and these ones we have two persons standing the rope as another child is skipping in the middle. Nobody want a penny? Me. Who wants a Mr. Freeze? Me. All right, so for us to cool off together, Mr. Freeze, after you walk around, we got to dance for our penny. We got 30 seconds to dance and beat our drum and shake. Let's go. Ready? And sing loudly. One, two, three, go. <laughs> My name is 
is Gianni Meadows and I'm going to give you a tour about the clothing that we had back then and now. Okay, and we're going to start with this wedding dress from the 1970s and we have this flower bag dress, well, skirt and shirt here and back then in the 1940s they were really poor because war was going on and they had to use what they had and be creative. And we have this beautiful dress here with a straw hat from the 1960s. We have this beautiful dress here from the 1930s pretty shoes. We have this hair with a straw hat from the 1970s with these we have gloves, we have a necklace, and we have shoes with the dress in the 1960s. Here we have Quentin Carey from grade one with this outfit from 2000. And this is mine. And my friends with the clothing from the 1940 to the 1950s. And these are the things Greg Six did and Mashana's work right over here and Tyree's work. And this is Jacob's Carries right over there with his friends who did that. And we have Taya Johnson from grade one who did this beautiful person from the 1980s. And this is the Robin Hood bag that we use that they use to make the dress with over there. We have all these pretty straw hats and we have this beautiful uh, handsome suit with a crown chain and we have the oldest hat in the room with this with this beautiful pink dress from the 1940s. And I want to thank you for coming on the tour. My name is Aleida Jimenez. I am the Spanish teacher here in Tarpon Bay. And I'm working along with um, Miss Hall in the fashion um, area. And it's been a nice, I mean, experience to do this. What we've tried is to make uh, try to make the kids aware of what people were wearing during, during the 1900s till the present. And in my area in Spanish, we have been just like, you know, like learning all the names of the clothes and the kids did posters where they displayed like how people were dressing and during the different times and labeling those posters in Spanish. I have also um, helped a little bit with grade three in the health area so that they could talk about the, the different kinds of food in the Spanish and they will learn like what which foods are more important than others and it ha like I said it has been a great experience for me working in this project. Charles Strawn or Charles Stratton. If you get probably not a big way, it's a Scottish title, so I use the word Strawn. Or you can call me Charlie. I'm here from beautiful Waterford in Lutro, where this are one of my trades. I'm a chef by profession, a painter by profession, and a straw vendor, and also a farmer. So this plot I'm holding, this is the Santa Fe. Sorry, sorry, I made a mistake myself. I apologize. This is the, uh, why is it one name, children? I forget. Spider. Good girls. So this is spider web. These are the spider web plots. The big one you see there, that is the spider. And these are the fine ones, they are the web. I know you say a natural spider. You see the big one, the little one, that's the spider web. Because that's what you that, what is what's called the spider web. Children, what is your name again? Spider web. Good, good girls again. <laughs> this one is the single. The Sanapi. Yes. Or the shingle. What is again? The Sanapi. 